Hi, I'm Leah and this is Filter Free Photography. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can make a pinhole lens for your digital camera. So when you look at my camera on this table, you might notice that it looks a little strange. So I've mounted my a7 II with a pinhole lens that I made myself. Uh, sort of as a do-it-yourself project and I thought I'd show you how to do something like that and show you the results today. So uh, this is actually my original try. It's a piece of tin foil and I used a needle, I don't know if you'll be able to see it that well, but a needle to poke a pinhole into it. Um, I did a couple tries of this uh, to try and get it perfect. The basic idea is, is that, uh, as you may or may not know, one of the original cameras that was ever made was a pinhole camera because all that it takes is really a piece of uh, photosensitive paper and a dark box and a single pinhole and you get basically a camera that will resolve things to be more or less sharp. I hadn't seen a whole lot of people doing it for uh, modern cameras. One of the reasons for that is, is that to make a pinhole camera sharp it's actually better to have a larger sensor or a, a big sheet of film. And the 35 millimeter camera is not ideal for that. Uh, nevertheless, uh, cameras have come a long way and there are some advantages to using a full frame camera or a digital camera that weren't really uh, an option back in the days of manual cameras. So uh, the first thing that I did when I wanted to make this pinhole lens is I looked up how other people have done it. And so for a 35 millimeter camera, uh, it seems as if the common thing to do is have a focal length of about 27 millimeters, uh, 27, 28 millimeters. Uh, after that, it's once you know what your focal length is gonna be, there's, there's a whole bunch of calculators, I'll link one below, that will show you how uh, big your pinhole should be for that focal length. So once I had decided on a focal length of uh, about 25 to 30 millimeters, I used the calculator and I found that I should be making a pinhole about a third, a bit less than a third of a millimeter. And so that's what I originally did. And this was my first attempt. What I did is I stretched a tin foil, aluminum foil, over a Leica M adapter for my a7 II because that put the focal length around 25 to 30 millimeters. It's not perfect because um, the tin foil, I couldn't get it to be completely straight every single time but that was the basic idea. Uh, so when I first did this, um, I made the hole a little too big. Uh, what I did is I took the sewing needle and I put it all the way through. And uh, the sewing needle, I measured it, it, it seemed to be about the right width, but I, I think I measured it uh, a little off. And so I'll show you some of the pictures that I took with that. So when you're looking at the pictures here, uh, it might be clear to you that it's not very sharp. There's a kind of nice vintage, almost impressionistic quality to these pictures because of that lack of sharpness. And it's, um, I couldn't decide when I looked at these whether I was impressed at how well it was working on a 35 millimeter sensor or disappointed at how not sharp it was. So I have a lot of sensor reflection um, and I have a lot of not quite clearness and <clears throat> um, although I really liked the pictures from this first day out in the sunlight uh, I thought that I would try again the day after that and I made the pinhole a little bit smaller I just inserted the needle a little bit less far to make it uh, a little bit smaller so that it was like maybe a fifth of a millimeter um, and I took it uh, out to school it was a bit more of a gloomy day, but it did work. I did get sharper images out of it. Uh, sort of like a, a, a washed look because of the gray light that I was doing, but it's actually surprisingly sharp and it works surprisingly well. Um, so this was my second go at the pinhole lens. You can see the Leica adapter is still inside of it. Um, 
and you can't see the pinhole because it's too small. But uh, it worked really well, except for sometimes that sort of sensor reflection, the double image kind of look. And I'm not sure if that was a reflection or if it was a second pinhole or what was going on there, but nevertheless, it worked really well. So there's some things that I didn't expect from this and uh, maybe I should have, but that are really appealing parts about using a pinhole camera. One of these things is that uh, you get a really wide angle lens, which uh, can really give you a sense of space. Another thing I liked about the pinhole camera is that uh, it really does look like you're shooting vintage film or something like that, more so than anything I've ever seen on a digital camera. Um, <clears throat> It's also really, really good for showing you how disgusting your sensor is. So especially the first day with my first attempt at the pinhole camera, uh, my sensor was just completely covered in dust. I cleaned it a little bit afterwards, but not perfectly. One advantage that a digital camera has for a pinhole camera uh, is that uh, you really can set the shutter speed and the ISO a lot more variably because you can kind of see what it's going to give you very very quickly which was not an advantage people had in the 1800s when pinhole cameras were first being made uh, or were commonly being made um, so that gives you the opportunity to in the right light actually take selfies uh, it can give you the opportunity to take portraits of people you can use it inside which is not something that's very common with pinhole cameras um, so the pinhole design actually works very well even though the sensor is pretty small for a 35 millimeter camera compared to those boxes you might have made in elementary school. I really enjoyed the vintage look of these cameras. I really enjoyed how wide the angle was and um, how it didn't look like any other lens. It did, cut, it did give a different kind of lens quality uh, or lack of lens quality. Um, I'm not sure that I would take selfies with it ordinarily, but it was certainly fun to bring around and experiment with and see what I could get out of it. So if you're trying to design your own pinhole lens, there are a lot of uh, considerations around it. Um, as I said before, there is uh, several calculators online to help you figure out what the focal length should be and what the pinhole size should be for that focal length. Uh, you'll also have to think about how you're going to make it, what the material should be, if it's completely light proof. Uh, the tin foil isn't ideal in some ways because it moves so much, which uh, was an unintended way to change my focal length a little bit to see what worked best. But it really is a great example of a very vintage technology, almost archaic technology, being adapted to modern cameras in a way that you wouldn't expect, and it does things that you wouldn't be wouldn't expect. So thanks for watching. If there's any other project like this that you'd like to see me do, please let me know. Um, or if you've ever tried to make a pinhole lens, lack of lens, for your Sony camera or any other digital camera, please let me know and tell me how it went for you. But uh, certainly, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time with more vintage lens reviews and tutorials and do-it-yourself projects. Thanks for watching.